Hello, so it's day six of our Inferno with us. It's about half past ten in the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we are about to start the process of teaching her to sit. Um, now, uh, when, when a lot of people get dogs, the first thing they teach them to do within four hours is sit and then pull, just so they can show everyone how, how good they are, how uh, what cute little puppy does. Before you start training a dog to do things, ask yourself, do I need my dog to do that? Um, because you can save yourself a lot of time and effort. If your dog will never need to be able to sit on command, you don't need to waste your time teaching it. Like teaching down to a dog, I've never taught down to a dog because I think it's a vulnerable position the dog doesn't like being in. So I've never never wasted my time doing that. My other dog, Darley, sort of, um, put herself in a down, so I reinforced that and I used that, but there's, there's things that people have dogs doing that you might not need them to do, so prioritise what you're going to need your dog to do and then and work on those first. And a lot of what we're going to do down the line is going to involve the dog sitting, so I'm going to teach her sit. Now, the first thing you do when you're teaching a dog any kind of movement is you get the, you get the behaviour that you want. So we want when she's sitting, her bum to be on the floor. So that's all I'm going to look for now. Eventually when she's sitting, or when I say sit, she's going to sit on the floor, with a bum on the floor, sit up, right, straight up, and pay attention to me. Even if she's looking at something else in the distance, like a, a bird that's been shot or a dummy that's been thrown, I still want to pay attention to me and looking back to me and seeing what I'm doing. Um, also, I'm going to teach the dogs to sit on a hand signal, so when my hand goes up, on a word of command, sit, and on a whistle. So one long blast of the whistle for me will mean stop and sit. Um, so think about what your words of command are going to be. You don't, you don't want them to sound like any other word of command. So some people say sit down, but then they expect when they're, they're telling the dog to lie down, they're saying lie down, and both of those words have got down in. Also, when a dog's jumping up the furniture, you tell it to get down. So there's three different commands there with the same word in, or the same sound in. The dog's not gonna have a clue what you're going on about. So make it clear and concise for the dog, make it easy, and that's half your battle done. So, what we're gonna do, we're not gonna introduce the word yet, we're just gonna get that behavior. So I've, I've got a little bowl of tiny pieces of sausages, and I'm just gonna play around with it. I'm gonna entice her with the sausages, it's easy with having a little puppy. I lift something up, she looks up. As she looks up, the bum goes down. That's a sit. The second she does that, I'm going to give her that food. Now, it's really important when you're marking good behaviour by, by rewarding good behaviour that you, your timing is absolutely perfect. It's critical. So if you can reward the behaviour that you want within half a second of achieving that behaviour, that's optimal. That's what you want. If you can get it within a second of achieving that behaviour, that's also good. But if it's any longer than a second, you're pretty much wasting your time because the dog won't associate why it's getting that treat. So the dog will just think it's getting a treat, it won't realise it's getting a treat for putting its bum on the ground. So you've got to be really quick with your timings. And this is why clicker training or uh, verbal marker training is also good. And I'm going to make a few series of videos on, on clicker training, how to do it. So we'll start off with that. I'm just going to do four or five at a time and then not knock it on the head. And again with everything, it's not about doing 30 of them in one go once a day. It's about doing four or five of them 30 times a day. That's how you get the best reactions. So you can see the dog's fidgeting. She wants down. I'm not going to put her down because that's going to teach her to fidget if you want down. She's only going to go down if she's calm. So that's a little, a little lecture for you. So I'm going to lower her to the floor. If she fidgets, she comes away. Good girl, good girl. That's this, that's this. So all I'm gonna do, you don't need to make any noise or any fuss. Dogs don't, when dogs are communicating with each other, there's no noise, and we don't need half the noise we, we, we make. Um, so be as quiet as you can, it's just background noise. So, food's up. Straight away. Bum down, straight away all she's getting. So she's already in a sit, I'm going to bring her out to the sit and then wait wait till she does it again. Now 
when you're given the, the food reward, she's a tiny little puppy, I'm giving it to, to her just underneath her head level. That way she's not going to jump up to take it out of my hands. So I'll show you what happens if you give it too high. You get that and you're pulling her out to the sit. So you, if you want to reward her, just below head level. So she stays in the sit. Good girl. Good girl. And that's all you need to do. Don't worry about adding the word sit. That's further down the line. We want that behaviour and we want it absolutely perfect before we start confusing it, adding sounds and noises and stuff like that. Okay, so we'll do a few more, but that's it for now.